Good afternoon, everybody. I am out here with Greg today doing a little bit of late, late season creek walking. It's the end of the first week of November and uh, Greg has got a turtle <laughs> already. Did you get both of them? I got one. The other one went this way. They buried in the leaves. Here's one of the loggerheads. Yep. It's a big one. Yeah, I think it's a big female. What's up, dude? Or dudette? Snake. Snake. A queen Did it dip it, in? It went up into that hollow bank. All right, well, we've already got a couple of turtles and Greg just saw a snake, so hopefully we're in for a decent creek walk. It is late in the season, but you never know. Yeah, so you can see the water level is much better. We have not really had that much rain, so I don't know where all this water's come from, but it's not just super, super dry anymore. There's plenty of creek. <laughs> she just sank, there she goes. That was a big loggerhead. And there's another female. loggerhead. Is that a male? Female. Another female. What's up, lady? She's got a nice uh, nice notch in her shell there. Oh, this guy's got baby leeches on him. Look at that. Loggerhead number three for the day. So the, uh, the leeches that live on these guys are not harmful to the turtles whatsoever. So we don't bother them. Let nature be. And uh, we'll let him go back into the water. Other than the silt. We got another loggerhead. Out of the muck he comes. He's nice. Very pretty. Well patterned. I'm gonna give Greg a bite. Hello. There is a basking river cooter. It's as good of a look as we're gonna get because of how far he is, but it's another species for the day. Look at this little well camouflaged dude. It's either a southern or a northern cricket frog. We do have both here. I'd have to grab him and look at the back of his legs, but you can see he looks just like another leaf tucked in there. And here's yet another one. Greg just caught this guy. This guy also has some pretty extensive damage to the back of his shell, likely from bigger turtles. Looks really good on the bottom right there. Nice clear little pocket of water here. The water clarity is not nearly as good as it has been the last couple times we've been out, but. All right, here's another one. Greg spotted. Ah, he's going. No. <laughs> well, that one's gone, but Greg's got another one. <laughs> one right here. I redeemed myself. There's that one. And there's the one Greg got. Greg just found half a loggerhead. Look at this. He's missing his entire back end. And you can see roughly where his shell would be if he had it, but he doesn't because <laughs> his fellow brethren have chewed it off. There's really good numbers of these out today. It's been about all we've seen or at least all we've been able to get video of so far, but I mean, I'll take it for mid-November. Here's another big healthy female, look at that. So many of these guys out, and uh, there's normally a lot of them, but I wasn't expecting to do this well with them just because of how late it's getting in the year. So each one of these guys I'm happy to see, and I'm assuming they're probably eating some of these acorns, and that could be part of why they're so active right now, but either way, just nice to be finding herps in abundance in November. And here's yet another one, just downstream from the last. Yeah, this, I think it was this little pool, or maybe a little further downstream where I saw like five at the same time. Still no snakes though, at least that we've gotten in hand. We've seen a couple of things plop into the water. This water is very slowly turning black. He can see me. All right guys, so check this out. I've got three little hatchlings, and then Greg is looking around for more, but he found this bigger one right across the creek from where these little guys were. So we got four more right here in this little area. All right, little dudes. Oh, the creek is moving them around a lot. Let's see if they'll, uh... there he goes. Well, there is number, insert number here because I'm <laughs> gonna have to keep track of them afterwards, but yet another loggerhead. 
nice healthy adult male. I saw a couple fence lizards, and here is a nice, handsome looking green anole, although it's not very green right now. Wow, hello. That was quite the maneuver you just did. And yet another one. Ta-da. Look at this big dude. He is huge. Look at his head next to my thumb. Twice as wide as my thumb. Very nice. They're everywhere. Yeah. Cheers. They're coming out of the woodwork. <laughs> All right, you two, have a nice winter. This might be the last time we actually come out and look for these guys before it starts getting too cold. You can see the vague outline of a loggerhead right there. <laughs> look at him, Let's see if I can grab him, but this water is deep. And he's got like a nice crack here. Yeah, he's gone. Well, it's definitely getting pretty late out here, so we might try shining a little bit after dark, but it's gonna be cooler tonight, so. Maybe some cotton mouths if we're lucky. Hello, little dude. There's another one of these little dime-sized baby loggerheads from this year. One of the cutest animals that you will see in nature. Baby mud and musk turtles. Baby mud turtles are even smaller than this. They are kind of incomprehensibly small. But super cute. Oh, Greg's got another one. He's in pursuit. He got him. And now we got a nice little double here. Potentially at the end of the creek. Look at this guy's little chin tubercles. Got a little turtle beard. Very nice. All right, we got these guys who we just found, and then Greg found some nice uh, diversity to add to the day. Another loggerhead and the common musk turtle. Very nice. Nice little quad catch right here in this one little spot. All right, here's a pretty cool comparison of a common versus loggerhead musk. I know we see both of these species all the time, but it's not terribly often we get them both in hand at the same time like this. So you can see stripes on the, uh, the common musk on top and then spots on the loggerhead down below. It's the easiest way to tell them apart. Superficially, they do look the same, but once you have them in hand, they're pretty easy to tell apart. Here's another little cor uh, cricket frog. I almost called him a chorus frog. This guy's actually got a little bit more color on him. The species is really variable. You get all sorts of different patterns in them, but normally we overlook them because they are so common, but they are quite diverse. All right, Greg has eyes on a oh, turtle. Two of them. Oh no. There was two. Oh, they both went under something, but I, I know where this one went. He's going feeling. Got it. It's a stink pot. Nice. Stink pot number two. That's a pretty one. That one gives you a better look at it than the other one. Well, this guy's not really shy at all. He's giving us a good look at his big old neck. But second common musk turtle of the day, also known as the stink pot. Very, very common in uh, backyard ponds, drainage ditches, stuff like that. Look at that long neck. It's not very often we get a, a mud turtle or a musk turtle that's just willing to come out of his shell, so. We'll uh, put him back in the muck here. I actually filmed a bit on these for the channel before. Look at the cross section. Yeah. This is actually a communal microorganism called bryozoan. I think, I, I mean, this this just looks like a ball of jelly, honestly. And they're remarkably delicious. <laughs> I, I don't think they're actually edible. I wouldn't, I, would, yeah. I wouldn't eat any gelatinous masses you find in the lake. This one is massive, look at this. Just like a bleh. There we go. Worm snake. Nice. First snake of the day. Took way too long. All right, there's a decent look at this guy. Finally chilled out a little bit, but we'll put him back and uh, flip the rest of this thing, and then we're gonna go shine around and see if we can maybe find some cotton mouse or Nerodia. And there is yet another worm snake, right down from the first one. Very nice. Greg's got a turtle. Look, there's a heron up there. This is scary. Like, I just cannot see where I'm putting my feet. 
Is he just chilling? Yeah, he's just oh, I see him from here on the side of the rock. Yeah. <laughs> That's a cool NC2. I think there's another one right here. Yeah, I see it. You see it right yeah. there? Yeah. Look at that little guy. You want to try to grab that one if it's actually one? Yeah, I'll try to grab this one. Look at this guy. I think it's not anything actually. <laughs> so cute. Look at that guy. Hunting turtles, probably. All right, we're going to go get some food and then maybe shine around for a little bit for snakes and see if anything's out after dark. But it's definitely cooling off pretty fast already. We can feel it in the water. So we'll see. All right, we are at our next spot shining around. It's not quite dark yet, but it's about to be. And uh, if we don't see anything pretty quickly after dark, we're not gonna stay out too late because it is November at this point, but maybe we'll see something. There's some pretty cool fresh beaver work. You can see he has knocked this tree down into the creek. And look at this, it's like if someone put it through a wood chipper. It's spooky that they can do that with their mouths. What's up, dude? Dudette? Just, just a deer. Chilling out. What's up, dude? <laughs> the lady you want is over there. I am not it. I promise. Missing an antler, bro. Yeah. It's kind of spooky looking. Why, what are you doing with your leg there? <laughs> stanky leg. He's doing the stanky He's doing leg. The stanky leg. That uh, the stanky leg, as it would turn out, is not actually what's going on. I think he's got an injury. But uh, not much that can be done about that. He's just going to have to figure it out. He's in a pretty good area for it. I mean, there's lots of people around here. All right, here's our first turtle after dark, another common musk turtle. We're in a different creek drainage now, where I don't believe I've ever seen one of these guys prior to tonight. So, kind of neat, but this is, I think, our third one of the day, so... We've seen quite a few of them, just not quite as many as we do loggerheads. It's worth noting that these guys are called stink pots because they are very, very stinky. They have a very well-developed musk gland, and when you pick them up, they will not hesitate to release that musk, and it smells pretty wretched. So if you ever find one of these and try to catch it, just be prepared for the fact that it's going to really stink. They don't get the name Sternothrus odoratus for nothing. But we'll put this guy back. All right, young man. Off he goes. Look at this bowfin. Holy crap, that's a big fish. He just came out of there. Well, we finally got our hands on a snake and it's a pretty cool one. This is a big brown water snake that we found foraging in the creek, swimming along the bottom. Look at that big puppy dog, Nerodia. Bit me once when I picked it up, which they normally do, but once you get them calmed down, they are absolute sweethearts compared to Midland water snakes and all the other Nerodia, really. Very, very cool. All right, we'll get some footage of her going back into the water, and then we're going to keep on herping. So cool looking on the bottom. so cool like you put most other Nerodia in the water and they just kind of freak out and this thing's just gone right back to what it was doing when we first found it cruising along poking its head under rocks looking for fish kind of wish I had my GoPro right now we could get underwater footage of him but what a beauty this is a nice size gar always cool to see those guys Hey, we got a little snake cruise on the way back to the car. A live brown snake. We were just talking about these guys. How there's kind of a ridiculous number of them out here, and they usually are run over. But this guy is actually alive. Perfect. It's very late in the year to be finding snakes active after dark, so nothing crazy out here tonight, but a brown water snake and then a regular old brown snake. Not too bad. And uh, we're still not even back to the car yet, so we've got a little bit more time to maybe find something else even. Brother, hello. <laughs> I knew I heard something in these bushes. 
Look at him go. All right, everyone. Well, Greg and I did not see anything else after the possum, and we have some really, really nasty winter weather moving in. It's actually been a couple days since I was out with Greg. Um, I was gonna get out again and try to find a couple salamanders or something, but it's just been so oppressively cold lately. The high today is barely even gonna get into the 40s, and the overnight last night was like 27, so we are definitely in winter-like weather now. I'll probably throw up one more of my West Texas videos this week in addition to this one, so thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next episode.